In this film, we're going to be continuing on from our last YouTube film here, where we melted 100 grams of our scrap silver in our electronic furnace. This film, we're going to be showing you how we're going to be preparing this 100 gram silver ingot and showing you how we're going to shape it using a rolling mill. My name is Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. This worked out to around about 97, 98 grams. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous ingot, nice and clean. We do have a little bit of flashing on the bottom here. You can just see it across here. That is where the ingot mold, the removable part, wasn't completely, completely flat onto the surface. There may be a little bit of oil there, a little bit of flux that just had a little bit of gap. The molten metal creeped its way through. And also on the top here, where the silver was starting to solidify when it came out of the, uh, the graphite crucible, you can just see we got a little bit of um, irregularity upon the top here. But we've got this fantastic size ingot. This is uh, 50 millimeters in width. The length right to the very top, 70 millimeters. And the thickness, is uh, 2.8 millimeters. Now, before we go any further with this, what we should do is remove the flashing that is on the bottom. Really, really simple. The flashing is very, very thin. You can virtually, or you can actually bend it with your fingers. Come along with a file if you wanted to, or what I'm going to do is just pass a saw blade down. As you can see, it just, it just comes off. And the advantage you've got if you cut this off, or cut the majority of the parts off, is that you can reuse those little bits again. If you happen to come along with a file and file them all off, well then you can't reuse them because that's gone into dust. I've got a little bit of an edge, I just want to remove that now. Nice, making sure that there's no little gaggy bits, no sharp bits. This area on the top here, at the moment, I am not really worried about it. I'm just going to see if it'll snap off. No, it's securely fastened, but I'm sure as we go through the rolling process, this little area here may actually crack and break off, but that's fine. We've got a huge piece of silver here, 97 grams worth, that we're going to sort of fabricate and put through the rolling mill. First thing you need to do is to make sure that there's no flux caught within the area here. If you do have any flux that may be caught, it's a good idea to put this into some safety pickle or some acid or some warm safety pickle just for that to dissolve any little areas that you may find. Um, sometimes you get the little bit of um, tiny little bits of uh, flux that gets taken through. I know there is no flux in the crucible, the graphite crucible, so in theory there should be no borax, but if you've used a typical crucible holder and sprinkled borax upon the melt, you may get a little bit of borax taken into the ingot. This is pretty, pretty clean. Now, a lot of people will say, well, if we're going to work this, what you need to do first of all is hammer it. Hammer it and, and, and try and do something with a crystalline structure of the piece. Hammer the ingot into a certain shape, reduce it down by about a third, then you can pass it through the rolling mill. Well, for, to be honest, I've never ever done that. And I've never found that I've had a major problem when it comes to passing the ingots through the mill. Sure, sometimes they do crack, but that is due to the, the alloy of the metal cracking and not because of the fact that I haven't hammered it. A lot of people will say hammer it and then anneal it and hammer it and it will align the crystalline structure of the metal or something like that. The jury's out on it. I don't think personally myself it makes any difference at all because if you're going to hammer it, well then you're going to roll it and by hammering it you're compressing it and by putting it through the rolling mill you're still compressing it. So for me, it makes no difference at, at all. If you want to hammer it, you can do. I personally don't see any advantage of doing that. 
What you could do though, is heat it up, warm it up and let it cool uh, gradually again, just to make sure that it is now completely annealed and yes, the crystalline structure has all been realigned and so forth. Yes, you can do that. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna go straight into the front studio where we got a nice brand new Durston rolling mill and we're gonna use that now to take this down. Remember, this is gonna be a gorgeous, nice, piece of sheet. We've got a little bit of um, dappled look upon the piece here on both sides, but when we take that through the rolling mill, that'll be compressed and we're gonna get a lovely, lovely finish. What I may end up doing is um, putting up in the acid as we go through the process, because yes, as we pass the ingot through the rolling mill, it'll work harden. Keep work hard on it, keep passing it through without annealing it, and yes, it will crack. We will anneal it every few passes just to ensure that the crystalline structure starts to relax, and then we'll pass it through the rolling mill again. Take very good care that you dry it before you put it through the rolling mill, because if there's any moisture left on the surface, it'll be transferred onto the rolls of the rolling mill and they could well rust. And once those rolls have rusted, they're gonna impart a mark every time it comes around on your piece of metal. Keep them nice and clean, keeps them nice and shiny, and that surface then will be passed onto this bit of silver and we'll get a nice, smooth, shiny, smooth piece of silver. The other thing that I actually could well do is that as we're working it, we may get a Sometimes you may get a little bit of a mark on the surface, but what I would do is get a sanding drum like this one here in a flex shaft and go over the surface just to get rid of any slight marks or any uh, maybe a little bit of borax that may be stuck on the surface. We can use this just to go over, just to refine the surface, keep taking it through the rolling mill and we should get an absolute perfect gorgeous bit of sheet and we can take that down to whatever thickness we want we can take it down to two millimeters one and a half millimeters keep that then as a nice bit of stock for when we come to want to use a nice bit of sheet later on in our projects so let's take the cameras into the front studio where we have our rolling mill and let's show you how we're going to work this now and how we're going to roll it and the correct procedure to get that gorgeous nice bit of stock silver So we come into our front studio where we have all the, the large pieces of machinery and I've got a nice Durston Agile rolling mill that we're going to be using to roll down our piece of silver. Now, one thing is the most basic thing you can possibly think of. You have to remember the width of the piece of metal that we've got and you have to think about the width of the flat part of a rolling mill that you've got. We're lucky here that this is 50 millimeters. We're lucky here that the flat part is in the region of around about 60 to 70 millimeters. So we should be able to pass this through the flats with no problem at all. We'll have to keep putting it through in this direction because we put it in widthwise. It's just that little bit too wide and it's gonna be going onto the V grooves and the D sections in this particular mill. Your rolling mill may not have the V grooves or the D sections. You may have extension rollers on the end, which in that case then, you'd have larger flat rolls top and bottom. But in this one, we are limited. We need to work out now the thickness of what we've got. We worked out this is around about 2.8 millimeter. What you want to do is turn the handle on this mill until the metal just goes through, a bit of a wobble, bring it down until it just bites. So now when we pass this through, we should get what's called a dead roll. It'll roll through, it's just touching the rolls but literally it's not doing anything. It just goes straight the way through. No compression, no deformation, hasn't made it any thinner. The rolls were just touching the surface. What we need to do now is to take it down. Now, how much do we take it down? Um, I said, I've been doing this for so long. I just come along and turn the handle a quarter of a turn and I take the piece through. Um, different mills are gonna have different reductions. Let me just double check on this one. So if we come along and that's a dead pass, 
and it goes through. We now are going to be putting this through a quarter reduction. So a quarter revolution on my handle is around about a quarter of a millimeter. Now, if you have a direct drive machine, this is going to be really, really hard for you. This has got a nice, gorgeous gearbox, which is going to make our life far, far easier. If it's a direct drive drive that you've got, you cannot take it down that much. You have to take it down a fraction because you are physically having to turn the handle. One revolution for one revolution of the mill here, it's a lot, lot harder. That is why I would always say you try and save up for a reduction, a gearbox on the side of your roller mill. It's gonna make life so, so much easier for you. Also, if you have a narrow piece of metal, you can take it down I would say a quarter of a millimeter, no problems at all. Because we've got the width that we're trying to compress, and that's a lot of metal we're trying to compress. I think a quarter of a turn, a quarter of a millimeter is gonna be far too much. And even with a geared mill, we are gonna be struggling. So I'm just gonna take that back, and I'm gonna be taking this down, I'd say about a, an eighth of a millimeter each time. So I'm gonna be doing an eighth of a turn on the top of the uh, handle here because otherwise it's going to be so so hard to take it down that far. So let's just pass this through. Now which way do we pass it through? The flat end or this end? Um, to be honest it really doesn't matter too much. I think that this edge down here where it was um, the last bit to go into mold is going to break off. I'm going to put the nice flat edge in first so I can be sure that this edge here is at 90 degrees to this edge, so I can be sure that when it goes in, I can be sure that that piece of metal is gonna be going in nice and straight and parallel. If I put it in this edge with this little area like this, as soon as it starts to go in, it may start to move around. And if it does start to move around and not go in straight, it may end up going over the V grooves or the D sections, and we're gonna mark the metal. So I'm gonna put it in with the leading edge, the bottom of the ingot mold, ingot itself first. And another little tip here, um, I wouldn't start with the handle down here. I would always, basically when you come to push, you can push far better than trying to lift because you can put your weight behind it. So I'd always have the handle round about, if you look at the side of the mill here, around about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock position, you can push and then you can use the momentum to take it round. It's very hard to sort of put it in down here and you're, oh, and you're having to struggle. So let's have a look. Put it in. That oh, was nice and easy actually. Let's take that down an eighth of a turn, put it in. All right then, so that's going through nicely. We've got a little bit of shine coming onto the ingot here where the metal is starting to be compacted. The rest of the piece actually hasn't been flattened too much. Just goes to show that this ingot is not exactly parallel. Another eighth of a turn, take it through. Lovely, it's coming along really nicely now. Another eighth of a turn. And we're coming along really nicely. We've got a nice finish coming onto the piece here. They're not worried about this bottom bit. Another eighth of a turn. So now it's getting quite hard. I can feel but each time it goes through the rolling mill, it's getting slightly progressively harder. Not because I'm taking it down any further, it's because the metal is starting to work harden. I'm starting to have to work at this now. I don't want to go any further, really, because I'm compressing the molecules, the crystalline structure of the silver. If you crush it and crush it too much, they're going to get so tense, they're going to crack, they're going to break. And you may end up with cracks developing on the outside edges 
of the ingot here because that is the area where breaks and cracks will happen because that's part that is the weakest. So before we go any further now, we want to anneal the piece, take this up to a very, very dull, dull red, keep it there for a few seconds, and that then will relax the crystalline structure. It'll make them all, all lovely and lovely and loose and relaxed again, ready to be put back through the mill. And we will carry on doing this then for as long as we need to, to get the correct thickness on our piece of silver. So let's anneal this first of all. We've got a nice area here where we're going to anneal, nice board on the bottom, heat this up, we've got a torch here and we're going to heat this. Gradually, gradually. Heat it up until it's a nice, dull, dull red. Try not to get too much colour onto the piece. Well, try not to get too much red coming through the piece. You don't want to overheat it. A gentle dull red, and so don't forget, we keep it there for quite a few seconds because we need to make sure that that metal is the right temperature all the way through. So using the sweet spot of the flame. So even though you can see a bit of a pinkish tinge to it, when we take the flame off, it's still black. So let's just work the piece. Won't be much longer now. And then what we're going to do is whilst then the metal has cooled down to a black heat, so there's no color in the piece at all, we're going to quench it in some of safety pickle, keep it there for a while, just to make sure there's no oxides left on it. It's in fact, it's not far off now. When the torch comes off it, it's still slightly, slightly getting pinker. Okay, so that's looking good. You can just see a very slight tinge to it when the torch comes off it. Keep it there for a few seconds. Make sure. Lovely. Okay, let's take the torch off and let's leave that for a few seconds. All right then, so we've put the piece in the pickle. Make sure it is bone, bone dry. If you really want to make sure Grab yourself your torch and put this back onto your little soldering station or a nice insulation board, soldering lock. Just gently warm it up with the torch, just to warm it up slightly, just to make sure there's no uh, moisture left at all on the surface. Because don't forget, any moisture on here will be transferred to these rolls. These rolls are gonna rust, there's gonna be marks on it, and those marks are gonna be transferred onto our piece of silver. Also make sure that your soldering board was nice and clean, there was no flux on it. Make sure there's no bits of flux stuck on here from the soldering board, and that now is nice and shiny as you can see, and it's good to go again. How thick is it at the moment? Good question. We're down to about 2.6 millimeters. So let's carry on taking it down. We're gonna take it down another eighth of a turn put it through and it'll be a little bit easier this time than what it was because now the crystalline structure has all become nice and relaxed and it can be started to be compressed again. So take it through. Nice. And take it down and again. And put it through if you want to a couple of times on the same setting. What you may find is that as the metal goes through the mill, it may start to bend slightly. This is the problem that you do get. You really cannot guarantee an absolute perfect, perfect flat piece of metal solely by going through in the one direction. What you really need to do is what's called cross roll, which would mean turning the piece of metal around at 90 degrees and putting the metal through this way. That then should even out any undulations as you can see what we have. But as you can see, the problem we've got is that with the rolling mill here, the distance across the flat, as I was saying, is now narrower 
than the piece of metal. So we do have a bit of a problem here. You may be able to turn the metal slightly to one side like this and put it through. Sometimes that will work out and you can get a nice flat bit of metal. But if you are having problems with this, it's completely natural, no need to worry about it. You'll need to cross roll it. So what you may need to do is simply cut off your piece of metal to make perhaps a nice square shape then you can put it through and cross roll it. Obviously, the thinner you go, the longer, the wider the piece of metal will, you will have, but you are always limited to that width on your rolling mill. So again, before you buy a rolling mill, always consider about what sort of things that you want to do with your rolling mill. This is the only limitations with this type of mill where we do have the, uh, what is usually on the extension rollers that are normally on the outside here built into the main roller it cuts down on the width so if i was using my mill downstairs i have the extension rollers i won't need the d sections um, on the main part and i could actually put that through widthways on the mill downstairs but Jason and everybody's working downstairs i can't really take the cameras down there to show you so that would be the only limitation Keep on going, you see we've got a lovely, lovely finish. It's all nice and shiny. There are some marks, but that's purely due to the oil that comes off it, or it may be due to it. It's a little bit of oxide that may be left upon the silver. But you can see we can go down and make this whatever width we want. This down is now to just around about 2.1 millimeters, or we can carry on to whatever thickness that we want. I would now start to anneal this again, Frequent annealing is not going to hurt the piece. I'd rather frequently anneal it rather than anneal it perhaps once or twice um, just so I don't get any cracks in the piece. Some people will advise you taking the metal down uh, around about a third of its original thickness uh, before you anneal it. I don't tend to do that. I know how hard the metal is getting by how hard it is to roll down. And if I find it is getting harder, and I cannot turn the handle, I'll stop, I'll anneal the piece, and I'll carry on annealing it. So All right, so I've just gone downstairs and I've just cross-rolled this, kept it in the same state as it is now, and you can see how gorgeous this piece of metal is. Absolutely looking fabulous. We're down to two mil in thickness. We've taken this down roughly around about three quarters of a millimeter and that is looking absolutely brilliant. The surface is lovely, lovely and smooth. We're going to pop that back through um, the torch. We're going to anneal it. We're going to put it back in acid just to make sure it's all nice and free from any oxides or anything like that on the surface. Make sure there's no grease on it. And that is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous piece of silver that we're going to be able to use in our projects. I'm going to leave it at two millimeters knowing that if I need to make it a bit thinner I can do but if I want a nice chunky bit of silver I've got a nice chunky bit of silver to use. There we go and that is how we use our electric furnace to melt down our scrap silver and using the roller mill we can take that down into whatever thickness we want. That's using the sheet. In the next one we're going to be looking at how to take down some wire using the same particular type of equipment using the electric furnace to melt down make a nice rectangular ingot using the rolling mill to take that down into some wire some square wire and also some d-section wire please subscribe if you haven't done it already smash that little bell icon if that's something that you're into and don't forget please if you like this film give it a thumbs up i'd love you to share this with all your friends as well but in the meantime my name is andrew berry for at the benches youtube channel take care i will see you on the next film bye bye mill my name is andrew berry and welcome to at the benches youtube channel yes got it right